Hi guys, it's Elliot from TutorialEdge.net and welcome to my fifth tutorial in the Programming 2D Pong with LWGGL3 tutorial series. In this tutorial we will finally get down to rendering some triangles on the screen, but to do that we're going to need to build both our Game Object and Vertex Array Object classes. So to begin with, what is a Vertex Array Object? A Vertex Array Object, or VAO, is a way to store different arrays of information that describe models in our games. These include, but are not limited to, vertices, indices, texture coordinates and normals and you'll typically use one vertex array object per model. So to begin with we're going to go into our project and we're going to right click on the source folder and we're going to create a new package and this is going to be called the graphic engine and again we're going to right click on, on this newly created package and create a new class called vertex array object. So to begin with we're going to create a nice and simple constructor and it's going to take in two parameters and these parameters, the first one is going to be a float array of vertices and the second one is going to be a byte array of indices and we are going to just below here create a new function called public void create array object that will handle all the create vertex array object creation right. and again it's going to take in the two parameters that we defined in the constructor so to get started creating a vertex array object is really simple you just have to call gl gen vertex array and we're going to set that to an int called vao and of course we're going to need to import all the appropriate classes first so import static org.lwjgl.open lwjgl.opengl.gl30.star and I'm just going to import them all So now that we've created a VAO object, um, we're going to want to bind it so that we can actually set some data in it. So GL bind vertex array, and we're going to pass in our VAO ID. Okay. And next, what we're going to want to do is add our VPOs to it, and I'm going to split up our next two VPOs into two different functions just so they're nice and um, segregated. Vertex, vertices, buffer, and this is going to take in our float array of vertices. And at the start, we're going to create a new ID, so we're in VBO ID, and we're going to create a new buffer, and we're going to use glgen buffers to do that. Okay, again, we're going to bind the buffer to open it. And we're going to set the type of buffer, uh, and that is GL array buffer. And we're going to pass in our VBO ID. Okay. And next, we're going to pass the data we want into this VBO. So GL buffer data, GL array buffer, same as before. And we're going to do create float buffer, and we're going to pass in vertices. And you remember that we created the create float buffer in our utilities class and we created it as a static function so we can essentially import static utils.utilities.star and we'll get rid of that error. And this basically sets up our array of vertices and processes it so that it's easily read by OpenGL in a format that it's expecting. So now that we've actually passed in the data to our buffer, we're going to want to do GL vertex trib pointer and vertex a trib, which is going to be a constant float, a constant int, sorry, that we're going to do at the top. So public constant. Uh, 
completely static failing. And it's going to be called vertex trip. And we're also going to do one for texture coordinates, but that's further down the line. A trip equals one. Okay. So we're basically telling Open G the GPU where in the vertex array object that we can find our vertices array, and we're sending it to the first location or location zero. Next, we're going to set the size of each vertex, and it's going to contain three different um, vertices. So we have three there, and after that, we're going to want to set what type of data. It, um, the VBO stores and it's going to be GL float because we're storing float uh, an array of floats. Next it's going to be whether or not it's normalized and it's not so we use false and the last two parameters we can just write 0 and 0 for and we don't have to worry about them. Okay so now that we've actually populated our VBO and told the GPU where to look for this VBO and um, we can close the VBO and it's the same as it was for opening it. So GL bind buffer, GL array buffer, instead, and instead of passing the VBO ID to open it, we actually pass in zero. Okay, so that's our create vertices buffer done. So we can call that up here, and we're going to pass in vertices. Okay, so the next thing we're going to want to do is create our indices buffer. So same again. Private void create indices buffer, and we're going to pass in our array of bytes. Okay, so int indices buffer object equals gl gen buffers. This was the same as we did it for the versus buffer object. And next, we're going to open our buffer. And instead of using the gl array buffer, um, as we did up here for our versus buffer, we're going to use something called a GL element array buffer, and this is a special type of buffer that basically um, is used for indices. So, IBO, and next we're going to want to pass in our data as we did up here. So, GL buffer data. GL element array buffer and create byte buffer and this is and again we're going to want to do GL static draw. Now you'll notice this stores up in error, that's because we actually haven't programmed this yet. So we're going to go into our utilities class and we're going to create a new public static method. Um, it's going to be a byte buffer, so it returns a byte buffer. Create byte buffer, and it's going to take an array of bytes. Byte buffer, buffer equals buffer utils dot create byte buffer data dot length, and we're going to want to import our byte buffer. So same as we did for the float buffer, buffer dot put data, buffer dot flip, and return buffer. Okay, so that's all we need. And it's actually different for the indices buffer. We don't actually have to close this one as in doing so we would actually remove it from our vertex array object. So that's us pretty much finished with the indices buffer. So we can actually go up here into our create array object function and call create indices buffer and pass in the indices as the parameter. Indices buffer. Okay. And next we're gonna to want to close our vertex array object and kind of similar to the way we close our vertex buffer ob object, we do GL bind vertex array and passing zero again. Okay, so 
Now that we've got all this functionality, we want it to be able to call it every time we create a vertex array object. So we're going to put in create array object and vertices and indices. Okay, so that's all we need for the vertex array object class and now that we've done that we can move on to creating our game object class and it's going to take a similar look to this so we'll pull this out and same as we have it in this one we're going to do new package and we're going to call this game engine so right click game engine new class and we're going to call this game object now every model or object in our game will be of the type game object um, and this is going to basically store our vertex attribute object for that model and other things such as the size, the count of the vertices and um, the functionality is how to draw this method, uh, has how to draw this object to get started, we want to give it a vertex array object ID so that it knows what vertex array object to use when it's drawing. Next, we're going to want to do public int count for the vertex count and public float size equals 1.0f. And next, we're going to want to instantiate a vertex array object and we're going to call this VAO import vertex array object and move on to the constructor so public game object int vo id this is just a sort of rudimentary way of um, storing the id this will be changed to further down the line this dot vao id equals vao id this dot count equals indices dot length and PL equals new vertex array object this dot vertices this dot indices and we'll just define our vertices and indices up here. So float array vertices equals and I've already done this so I'm just going to copy and paste it. Save me a bit of time. And our indices array is going to be so, okay, so the next thing we're going to want to do is our draw method. So, public void draw, we're going to want to bind our vertex array that we're going to be using, which basically opens it. So, this dot VAO ID, GL enable vertex strip array zero and GL draw elements. Define this as GL triangles because we're using triangle strips and um, because we're using triangles to render our objects. The count, which is how many um, verses it should expect. Because we're using unsigned bytes and um, GL unsigned byte and the initial offset is zero because we want it to start at the very start. Okay, so GL disable vertex trip array GL bind vertex array to close it. So we open it, draw the elements within it and then close it again and that's also running up errors so we'll import the appropriate libraries. So import static org dot lwjgl dot opengl dot gl11 dot star and that should get rid of all our errors okay so now that we've done that we can go back into our main and just up at the top we can create a new game object so game object and we're going to call this paddle. Okay, import our game object. 
class and then come down to the edit function and just below we've reviewed created the context for OpenGL and printed out its version number we're going to create paddle equals new game object and we're going to set the VAO ID equal to 1 here just for testing sake ok so now that we've created our paddle we can actually try and draw it so paddle dot draw and hopefully this will work yep you'll see a, a nice wee square or rectangle in the middle of our screen and that's basically what our paddle is going to look like um, so that's all for the vertex array object and game object classes um, in the next tutorial I will be looking at shaders and um, how to render textures so if you find this, use this tutorial useful at all then please leave a like in the video and subscribe to my channel for more LWJGL3 tutorials. Cheers!